Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a really good video for you today. The video today is going to be about the Derek Chauvin stabbing and the security lapses going on in Federal Bureau of Prisons that are off the charts and in most prisons as well. I'm going to jump all over this topic here in a minute, but before I get started, please check me out on all our social programs. All the links are below. Please check out my cigar, Gangster Redemption. It is a great cigar and uh, it's called The Crooked Diamond. The book, Gangster Redemption, the boxes of cigars. We have uh, still holiday deals, a whole bunch of stuff going on. Great cigar. I love it, and we're going to have a good uh, time today. Okay, let me jump right into this one. You know, people like that I tell it like it is, and I'm going to tell it like it is, uh, exactly on the case. I followed the Derek Chauvin case right from the beginning. I'm the only man on the internet, and you can go look this all over, who called the exact sentence that man was going to get by the judge in Minnesota after he was set, after he was convicted of killing George Floyd. Uh, I did a lot of research on that case. I did federal law for 10 years. I do go through people's paperwork. I know how to do that. I know other channels do. I don't go after people for stuff that I don't believe is relevant. Uh, uh, we all have our design beliefs on how things work. I spend a lot of time in prison, uh, maximum security prisons. So I come from the streets. Uh, I have a street code. I was offered a lot of, uh, uh, I was offered to keep my money and take three years instead of facing life, and I didn't do it. Uh, I faced the dragon, as some people say, and uh, I didn't cave. Uh, listen, I used to really hate them. I used to do a lot of things, but you know, everybody has their own reasons for doing a lot of things, and they got to live with themselves, and I'm going to leave that at that for that reason. Okay, let me go on to this case, and let me tell you what happened with Derek Chauvin. First of all, Derek Chauvin, last Friday, which is a few days ago, I'm doing this here on a Saturday, was uh, stabbed in Tucson, Arizona, in a, well, they, they, the Federal Bureau of Prison will call him a dropout prison or a dropout yard. Uh, we call him WITSEC, or Witness Protection. Uh, I actually call him, and a lot of us uh, guys who are on the yards in big places call him cheese factories. Uh, well... Tucson, Arizona, they have a cheese factory there. It's a medium security facility. Uh, that's what they say it is. You know, uh, these wit sex have guys that are murderers and whatnot in them. Uh, but they give them breaks and they usually have an outdate. Like even Derek Chauvin had a 20-year sentence as a 47 years old man. So 57, 65, he's going to be about when he gets out of prison if he does his time. Uh, give or take. Unless there's some other thing that happens. Now... Derek Chauvin was taken to the emergency room. He was stabbed at 12.30 p.m. Friday, uh, uh, reported Friday. It probably happened Thursday. It was that Thanksgiving or whatever that date. Derek Chauvin was stabbed at 12.30 p.m. That means it's after chow. So what happens is they have chow call in prisons, and after the chow call, uh, you know, they usually have yard call, or uh, they can go to the library, you can go wherever you're going to go, education and do what you're going to do, uh, and get things done. He was stabbed at 1230. Well, that tells me, was he stabbed in his unit? We don't know. Was he stabbed going somewhere, and who stabbed him? Obviously, they're not giving out any of that information. It is confirmed he was stabbed, and he was taken to a local hospital in serious condition. As of today, Saturday, he is going to make it. Uh, I don't give a shit. Uh, he's going to make it. And I and you know he didn't get the death sentence. So let me say something. I do care. I, I don't believe in killing people. People dying because of their charge. Uh, and, and I I don't believe in that. So anyway, Derek Chauvin will uh, make it. Probably not go back to that facility. Uh, there are they have uh, Whitsick prisons uh, a couple around the country. They have one up I know in New York and Otisville. Uh, I think they might have one down in the Carolinas, maybe in Florida as well. Well. What's happening, and I'm going to tell you why I believe this is happening. So anyway, Derek Chauvin was stabbed uh, multiple times, they said. And usually, going to an outside hospital, and if it's serious enough, two things happen. When you get stabbed in the body, you get stabbed in the stomach. It's pretty much automatic. I mean, as long as that, it's deep enough. It's automatic that you're going to go to an outside hospital. Because, uh, obviously, when you puncture the stomach, a, there's uh, bacteria and a lot of stuff that gets in. You can die pretty well. There's a lot of infections, a lot of stuff that happens. So if you get stabbed in the stomach, he's definitely going to the outside hospital. 
Now, it's funny because, you know, unless you're trying to plan an escape or something like that, uh, guys like myself and stuff, when I've been in many uh, fights, I've been stabbed twice in prison and I've been st and stabbed two people in prison. Uh, as you know, I spent three years in the hole in prison out of my time, and I had four 12-year sentences. So uh, I did over 11 years in federal maximum security prisons. And uh, let me tell you what happens. You survive. Is he in the survival mode? I don't know. You know, they go to these WITSEC prisons. I've never been to one, of course. Uh, but they have their, uh, their you know, ways. Usually, and you'll hear everybody say this, and it's true. You'll hear it from the, the union. But I have a good friend of mine named uh, uh, Gary Massey. He was the union president in Jessup, Georgia. And I'm going to have Gary on uh, very, very shortly. Uh, Gary's a good friend, and he tells it like it is. He was a union president in Jessup, Georgia. He was one of my guards, actually, and he's a great dude. That's all I can say. You know, just because he's a guard and I'm a, uh, I'm a convict didn't matter. Uh, so let's get that straight and how that works. Well, anyway, uh, usually the guys don't act out in those prisons because they have that status of being in a probably a cushy prison. Uh, you know, uh, uh, very, you know, well-fed. Uh, they get more, more privileges and stuff like that. Like right now in that prison, all visits are shut down. Think of that. All visits are shut down. And when all visits are shut down, you know, that pisses the whole compound off because that's what a lot of people live for in prison is the visit. I didn't, but a lot of people do. So that's number one. So since the prison is shut down, uh, literally, uh, that means they're on lockdown. And if the prison is on lockdown, wow, what a pain in the ass for the staff. and everything. They're, the prison system, the Bureau of Prisons is so understaffed as it is. There's been scathing reports coming out of Washington, out of an Inspector General report on how bad the policies and the procedures and the hiring is in the Federal Bureau of Prisons. I think they've gone through their uh, fifth or sixth uh, Director of Bureau of Prisons. They all say they're going to do more transparency, they're going to fix things up, they're going to change policies. Nothing gets done. I don't know why that is. I, I You know, I, trust me, people. I think I should be the Director of Bureau of Prisons. I really do. So... Besides Derek Chauvin, let me tell you what has happened. Five people in the last couple of years, five celebrity patients, uh, inmates, have been stabbed or killed uh, in numerous ways, and I'm going to name them. You have uh, Whitey Bolger, 89 years old, first day on the yard in Hazleton. I know the prison. Uh, killed by uh, Freddie Geese, and he was beaten with a lock within 12 hours on the yard. He was put into general population. This is the biggest rat in the system. Obviously a cocky prick, and, uh, you know, that's what happened to him. So he gets stabbed in prison, and, and not stabbed, he gets beaten with a lock and killed. That's Whitey Bolger. You have uh, Epstein. Everybody knows who he is. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein, a sex offender, uh, found in his cell hung. Uh, I still question that, and, and I know the reports came out, oh, it was, it was a hanging and all this. Trust me, Gary Massey and I discussed how that can be easily done, and how it can be washed under the rug by the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Uh, and I, I do believe it is. He ends up dying, and he had a lot of information on a lot of people, so that's another one. Then you have Ted Kaczynski. A lot of young people won't know who that is. That's the Unabomber. He killed three people, injured many. He was sending mail bombs, put out of what they call a manifesto into the newspapers. Ends up getting turned in by his brother. Uh, pretty wild. But he lived in, in the mountains of Montana, literally in a cabin. He was a genius. And he, they called him the Unabomber. And he ended up getting, of course, life sentence. Uh, and he committed suicide. Uh, another suicide. When I hear suicides in prison, I kind of shock. I kind of smile because... I was in prison, and uh, let me tell you something. I've seen people commit suicide, really commit suicide, and then I've seen people, they say it's a suicide, and it was killing. And it was either killing by the guards or killing by the an inmates and putting a rope around his neck and, and done. I mean, they took one guy down off a, off a locker, you know, he's hanging from the locker, and the door opened, he was just like hanging low, and he had a big hole in his head. Now, I don't know how you could kill yourself or hang yourself when you already got a hole in your head. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me, but it has happened. Uh, okay, then now you also have Larry Nasser. Larry Nasser is the sex offender who, uh, he was uh, uh, the Olympic doctor, 
uh, for the uh, U.S. gymnastic team, the Olympic team. That's uh, uh, Simone Biles and all the, the great athletes, and, and he abused so many of these people. And he got, I think, a 60-year sentence, and he's, uh, he got uh, stabbed in Coleman too, a penitentiary. Uh, I know it well. I was in Coleman. And, uh, you know, now I just listed five people who died or got or, or abused or assaulted in federal prison. Uh, and here's why. Here's my belief. Listen, look who was, look who was abused. A cop, Derek Chauvin. Two sex offenders, Jeffrey Epstein, Larry Nasser. One of the biggest rats ever, which was uh, uh, Jeffrey Epstein. The Unabomb is a little bit different. I don't know why he would have been, you know, targeted. Maybe he's a legit one. Maybe the one out of five is legit. I don't know. I'm not trying to say anything about anybody, accusing anybody of anything. But do you think the guards really care about those people? I don't. Trust me, I don't either. Don't get me wrong. I am not a cold-hearted uh, prick, so to speak. I care about people. But listen, I often say I don't believe in the death penalty, and here's why. Because true justice comes where it belongs, in prison. You don't need the death penalty. The government doesn't need to do that. That's too powerful of a tool to hurt people and kill people when they want to. There's been too many uh, racists and, and people who were killed in prison and hung back in the day uh, to, to warrant no death penalty. I don't care what death penalty shouldn't be. Nowhere in your Bible or anybody else's say, kill somebody, you know. Uh, it says actually forgive. But besides forgiving, these guys got what's just because they got onto a prison yard and, and maybe they killed kids and they hurt people. And Listen, you're a sex offender. People don't like you. Uh, you're a rat. People don't like you. Well, listen, there was a time when I was big, big, wanted to kill them all and all that. And I was in that, I was in that mode. Listen, I'm too old. Uh, now I think it's going to come. I look in the mirror every day, and I am proud of who I am. Uh, I feel uh, I try to educate a lot of young people, a lot of people on this channel, to not make the choices that I made, not get into the crime and the life I led. And uh, but I do it from from a position of honor, from a position of standing up for my word. I also, you know, don't believe you should, you know, someone said, "Well, you said Larry did. I should run a, run, you know, run an honorable life and all that." That doesn't mean rat. Never said that. I don't want, I love when I hear of a person turning their life around. Uh, whether it's guys on YouTube today, uh, whatever they did, they turned their life around, good for them. I really feel for them. Uh, and I hope it's true and I hope it comes from their heart. Uh, but that doesn't mean you have to go to the police. You know, if you're out there and you get caught now, so, oh, I'm going to change my life now. Let me tell on everybody and then change my life. That's bullshit. You know, you, you, either took an oath or you follow a creed or whatever it is from gangs to the mafia or whatever it is you know honor your word listen i have one thing in this life is my word and that's why it's kind of pissed me off that the book happened that we're a little late on our book uh and but that's that's not my word that's making stupid choices by picking the wrong companies and stuff of that nature but that's coming up uh getting rectified um now as far as Derek Chauvin and all these people in the Federal Bureau of Prisons and this, the system that's going on right now. Uh, what are they going to do to stop it? I don't think they want to stop it. I think they kind of get pissed this is out in the uh, in the public. Uh, I want to emphasize something to people and what they don't understand. When you're talking penitentiaries, hear me out. Penitentiaries. I'm not talking about a federal prison camp. I'm not talking about federal prison, low security. They have super max in the feds. And if you look it up online, it's the one of the worst prisons in the world. It's called ADX Colorado. Then they have penitentiaries, which I was at. And they have Lewisburg. Uh, they had Atlanta. They had to take these down. I don't even know if they took Lewis down. They had Hazleton. And they got, uh, uh, oh my God, you go all the way down to uh, Marion, Illinois, and Terre Haute, Indiana, and Lompoc, and when I was in Coleman, has two penitentiaries now. Coleman one, Coleman two. Uh, mine was Atlanta. When I was in Atlanta, it was the worst prison in the, in the country. We had murder a month for 18 months. Now, what I want to emphasize is that in the prison system, low facilities and camps, listen, uh, they are. They're, they're a lot sweeter than a state facility. Uh, but when you get to the penitentiary level, you don't want to go to a federal penitentiary because your money or your connections won't matter. Uh, 
Yes, there's corruption like in any prison, but not at the level it is in state prisons. So if you are in a state prison and you have connections, you went to high school with someone, it's a lot different. In federal prison, let's face it, man, you're done. They'll take your mob boss and they'll send him halfway across the country or all the way across the country and you're done. And you have a spending limit and you have a uh, phone restrictions and they monitor phones, they have more money. Everything that goes along with the federal government happens in, in the federal system. So don't let anybody, whenever I hear people say, oh, I'd rather go to a federal prison. Well, that's not entirely true. You don't want to go to a federal prison if you go to a penitentiary. Uh, I'll bring, I bring some guys on here uh, who are in penitentiaries, and I'll tell you, the killings and stabbings and, and, and crazy shit going on in those prisons is a lot, a lot worse than some most state prisons. I've been in state prisons, and it's a lot worse. And I'd rather go into state prison. Personally, I'd rather not go to prison. How's that? Uh, and I'm not. At my, my age, my life, uh, time, I'm not going. But getting back to Chauvin. Uh, Derek Chauvin pled guilty, and he thought he wanted to, you know, uh, do his sentence in a federal prison instead of a state prison in Minnesota. Probably a pretty bad choice, even though he was in a medium. Uh, some of those mediums can get rough. People got a lot of time. Uh, and, you know, you got to remember something about sex offenders and rats and... Uh, uh, child abusers or stuff of that nature or people who beat on elderly people or something of that nature. Everybody in prison is a human being. And one of my biggest fears when I was in prison, I had young children. And if anything happened to those children, that was my biggest fear, what I'm going to do to the, do to the person when I get out. And that's why I tell people and young people to uh, think before you act. But you're not going to run across people in prison like myself or whoever, who have young kids, and I could have had a bad day, and I could look at this guy who can abuse your children, and all of a sudden I find out my child's abused. I'm going to take it out on somebody. Uh, and, uh, or, you know, we all have mothers, and we all, you know, listen, I, it's not an honorable crime, sex crimes. Uh, rat, and the same thing. You might be in prison. You might have got your sentence. You might have a life sentence. You don't care now. And it was because of a rat. And this guy's walking around like he owns the world. And he's a rat. And you had a bad day, you're going to do something. And that happens. Whether you smash him from behind, if he's too big, or you, you know, uh, stab him, whether you, you know, try to uh, get him in his cell, whether you throw hot boiling uh, oil and water on him. And there's so many ways to abuse somebody or get abused in prison. Uh, so I want everybody to know that. So don't think for one second, it's, oh, I'd rather go to the I'd rather go to the feds than the state. Nah, better check that. That's number one. Uh, number two, just don't go to prison, obviously. Number three, the people I mentioned, all of them, from Whitey Bulger, who's the oldest, Jeffrey Epstein, Larry Nassau, Derek Chauvin, uh, Ted Kaczynski. Listen, I could care less. I think the crimes they committed and, and who they were had more to do with it than anything. And I think the guards themselves, who have kids, guards themselves, who have brothers, sisters, mothers, the guards themselves, who even the good guards, and like uh, Gary Massey, I'm going to talk to Gary about that as well. Uh, listen, they don't like them, we don't like them, and uh, before you know it, they're in trouble in prison, and that just happens, it's period, it happens, it's end of the story, and as I tell people, uh, don't think too much into it, don't think, oh, this happened, or this happened. Derek Chauvin, listen, what he did to George Floyd was the was a power move and why cops are hated and I hate to see that cops are hated because listen I don't hate cops I hate scumbag cops I do not like cops that have to show their power or they they think they're tough guys or whatever it is that goes along with that that's bullshit uh, and I'll call them out myself I teach some police academies and I, and I talk about that I say listen you don't have to show that you're a man you got a badge and a gun Leave it at that. And don't pull that gun unless it's the last resort. They all pull a gun the first thing. You see them rake for a gun instead of a taser or, uh, or a baton or whatever it is. Mace. Listen, when I grew up, you had fists, you fought. And uh, you win, lose, or draw. I've seen cops take their belts off, put them in the car, fight a guy, lose, walk away, and that's the end of it. Or win, walk away, and that's the end of it. And, and, and listen, it was a respect issue. Uh, you don't see that today. Uh, obviously there's cameras and stuff and I get all of that part of it but 
I'm going to blame leadership and law enforcement. One, because they don't pay the people enough. So you got who do you blame? Not just the leadership. You blame the cities. You blame the the uh, uh, agencies that don't pay. Look at this. Look at Long Island, New York. You very rarely hear about a lot of abuses going on there. And here's why: they get paid so well. You think they're going to lose their job? You think they want to lose their job over stupidity? First of all, they're educated. They're lawyers. A lot of them. Uh, uh, guys leave the law profession and join the, the, uh, in Long Island, Suffolk County or Nassau County uh, Police Department, the highest paid police in the country. Uh, you going to lose your job? No. But you pay some of these guys $25,000 a year, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. How do you have to raise a family? See a trunk full of money? I'd take it too. Come on, let's be real, everybody. Don't talk to me about you know integrity and all this kind of stuff when you can't even put food in your family's mouth. And that's exactly what a police chief, a friend of mine, told me once. Larry, listen, people are human beings. To feed my family, if I had to kill you, I'd do it. And I respect that, totally. Uh, and I get it, and it's an honest thing. And I think what most people don't know is, yes, they go into the right reasons. People go into law enforcement for the right reasons. I believe that. Most of them. Not the, not the guys who are bullied in school and now they want to go to... You know, they took judo, and now they want to go be a cop, and they want to carry a gun and badge and be, the, be in charge. Bullshit. Bullshit. And we all know it. It's bullshit. Uh, those are not the kind of guys we need. But prison system is no different. The prison system's even worse. They're around convicts. There's a very fine line between a convict and a, and a uh, or an inmate and a guard. Very fine line. Don't, ever, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. There's a very fine line that uh, 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 sometimes not recognizable. Uh, they become criminals. Things have changed. Technology has changed. Phones are worth more money. It's crazy things. And you know, Listen, I've been out of prison 15 years, and uh, I still am in the prison system a lot, meaning I have a lot of friends in it. I still stay in contact with a lot of people inside. And uh, knowing the system the way I can stay up on some laws that are important for inmates, I have one of my great friends who comes on my show all the time is Paul Tolini. And Paul and I, Paul did 27 years in prison. And he's a convict. He's a stand-up guy. And he does the law like I did and uh, better than me. Uh, I might have been better at the in-house stuff, the, uh, you know, the BP-8 process, the BP process, administrative process, uh, and suing for uh, different things, civil rights or uh, something of that nature. That's called 1983. It's a Bivens Act. But I, I want everybody to know that Derek Chauvin is just the tip of the iceberg that's going on in prisons, period. Just remember that. It's the tip of the iceberg. Uh, it's out there because he's a high-profile uh, convict, an inmate, you know, convict, a high-profile inmate. Uh, and I think it's just going to keep happening. And I think the more that, that we keep... Uh, Hiring the wrong cops, they make their mistakes, they belong in prison. Hey, that, that's, that, that's the game. There's a lot of people who cheer it. I don't cheer anybody uh, outside of what they deserve. Some people say, well, he deserved that. No, he didn't. He deserved the sentence he got, taken away from family. He's now a convict. He's got to do 23 years, I think it was. So I'll do 20, probably 20 years. And uh, you know what? That was what he deserved. If that's what he got, that's what he deserved. Jeffrey Epstein, who knows what was going to happen. They killed him, I believe. Uh, Ted Kaczynski got what he deserved, I assume. He had a, he had a life sentence anyway. I mean, uh, he said he might be legit suicide. I can't say that. Uh, then yet Larry Nassar is a scumbag, abusing these poor uh, Olympic athletes. Uh, he deserves that too, in my opinion. Hey, that's karma. So uh, the people it happens to uh, deserve it. Hey, Whitey Bulger. See, let me tell you, everybody says, well, why do you, you just hate him because he rat and he was the biggest rat and all that? Let me tell you something. I heard about uh, about uh, Whitey Bulger way before he got killed, how he's scumbag he was in prison, getting cocky, thinking who he is. Well, you can't do that. You run into the wrong people in prison and the word was out. And the guys whacked him for eight, eight, 12 hours before he, 12 hours within the, within the prison system, 12 hours, dead. Beat him with a lock, 89 years old, try to cut his tongue out, they cut his eyes out. Hey, they didn't give a shit. They had life sentences at all. Then they then the system screwed over Freddie Geese by not even charging him and left him in a hole for so long, three years, 
It's just crazy what they did to that kid. Uh, so let's get fair. Bureau of Prisons, you better start looking internally or looking at guys like me who can listen. Paul Tolini said it once. He was like, you belong to be the Bureau of Prisons. I sure do. I have ways and I have systems. I uh, came up with policies and stuff that could change the prison system. And for no money. Uh, yes, you have to hire people with the right money. Have to. Has to be done. Has to be done. You got to pay people what they're worth. Period. Can't run a business that way. But I can tell you one thing. I can stop the abuses. I can stop the uh, uh, get rid of the bad guards right away. And there's ways to do that. And I know how to do it. The Bureau of Prisons needs a wake-up call. I hope Congress, I hope the Senate keep calling them out. I hope they just don't call them out. I hope they start doing more things. Uh, they, they're having a hard time finding the right people for that job because the people they find for the job are administrators or people who've never been in it. Let me tell you something. I don't know who you are or what you do or what you do out there. If I want to know about electric, I'm going to an electrician. If I want to know about law, I'm going to a lawyer. If I want to know about being a funeral parlor director, I'm going to go to a funeral parlor director. Well, if you want to know about prisons, go to a guy who's been in them on, on this side of the wall. Not just a book guy. Not a guy who went to college and knows all this bullshit. Go to the guy who knows the real deal. And that is what I did. I, I know it from the, from the administrative end. I know it from the whole. I know it from uh, being abused. I know it from uh, where they stick you and transfers and con air and everything you want to think about in the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Listen, I had a rough ride there, but it made me who I am today, and I'm proud of that. And I hope to keep you out of prison. I really do. And, uh, you know, I, I, I really, I got a few messages this, this week that uh, really made me feel well, and I want to thank you, the guys. You know who you are. I read a lot of comments. Some of the people just said stuff that, that really helped me get through a rough rough week. Uh, you know, a rough week because of, you, know, you have ups and downs through holidays and people and, and things. Just it, Everybody has it. No big deal. We get over it. You get strong. You, you plow through. But sometimes words help, and, and a lot of people said I helped them through some stuff, so that made me feel good. Thank you, and thank you. Uh, guys, Listen, I want to thank you all for watching, subscribing. Please subscribe. Please comment. Please like. That always helps. You know, I'm not quitting. You know, people say, you know, I, I watch guys quit. You know, YouTube will not monetize us. They'll do a lot of different things, you know. I, I play by the rules. Sometimes it's tough. You don't get monetized for a word or some stuff like that. I think they're getting too sensitive. I think that's that cancer culture bullshit. But... It's changing a little bit. I'm seeing that a little bit out there. And I'm one of them who's changing it. And uh, I'm going to say it like it is. Period. I am who I am. And it's not going to change. So thank you very much. Please uh, do that. Check out all my stuff. Check out our new stuff we got on the cigar site too. We have it's called Alpha Ice. This stuff is great. Uh, what it does is it is smoke deodorizer. Not just smoke. I mean smoke, but... I don't care if you're smoking a cigar or whatever you're smoking. It's going to take the smell, smell away from that place. You never know it the next day or even right then and there. So if you're getting pulled over by a cop, use the spray. Uh, if you're, uh, you know, you're in your room and something can happen because the landlord said there's no smoke. Matter of fact, we actually had a call from a guy who got it and he smoked in a hotel room. He said... He watched them go in after he's, he, you know, and he said, oh, I'm going to get hit for that. Fine. Never got hit. So I'm sure that helped. But anyway, have a great day, everybody. Please stay safe. Make good choices. I'll see you on my next video. Have a good day.